welcome to this new session uh, as the title mentions uh, today we are going to discuss a, a simple application and uh, uh, example of multiple regression multiple regression is a technique uh, which can uh, uh, include multiple explanatory variable uh, so this becomes an extension of uh, the last topic which was simple linear regression where we had one explanatory variable and one uh, dependent variable uh, one response variable as it is called uh, in multiple uh, linear regression uh, we are going to have multiple explanatory variable and a single response variable a single dependent variable so essentially uh, uh, we are going to study the effect of each of these explanatory variables on the response variable uh, but we are going to see some interesting interaction effect uh, uh, so particularly when uh, uh, explanatory variables are not uh, really independent of each other. So, uh, the, the, the uh, interesting insights are particularly in that space. So, as uh, we had seen the expression for simple linear regression, uh, let us extend that uh, and uh, now uh, we will have uh, we will have uh, k such explanatory variable uh, k was 1 in the simple linear regression model. So, now we can call it as either m uh, MLR or MRM does not matter what acronym we use multiple linear regression or multiple regression model multiple regression model right. Uh, we are going to explicitly say that uh, right now we are interested only in the linear regression right. Uh, let us let us focus on linear regression so that we can draw out uh, those insights uh, as I had mentioned earlier. So, for a simple uh, uh, for a multiple linear regression uh, the expression for uh, the dependent variable is going to be of this type uh, where uh, y is our uh, dependent variable, y is our response variable and uh, x1, x2, x3, xk are all the explanatory variables and of course, we have the same epsilon term, the er error term. Uh, just like a simple linear regression, the error term is uh, uh, going to have some assumptions. Uh, we, we are going to make some assumptions about the error term. In particular, we are going to assume that the error terms are independent of each other. We are going to assume that uh, the error terms have equal variance and the variance is actually sigma squared, uh, sigma epsilon squared and uh, that the error terms are normally distributed, right. The error terms are normally distributed. These were the same assumptions that we had on the simple linear regression error term also. So, the question becomes estimation of these beta variables, uh, beta naught, beta 1 uh, uh, all the way to beta k. Uh, so, there are k plus 1 uh, betas to be, uh, uh, to be estimated uh, and uh, we are only going to have a sample of values for uh, x1, x2, x3 all the way to xk as well as y and uh, from this sample of data, we are going to estimate uh, these uh, parameters uh, beta naught, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 all the way to beta k. So, this is this is the uh, multiple regression model right uh, uh, all the things that we had said about a uh, simple linear regression apply which means that uh, the expected value of y given the bunch of x uh, will be equal to beta naught plus uh, beta 1 x 1 plus uh, beta 2 x 2 all the way to uh, beta k uh, beta k x k right. Uh, so, all, all the, the expected value is going to be uh, uh, beta naught uh, all the way to beta k, uh, beta k x k because the uh, expected value of epsilon uh, is going to be 0, right, uh, because the uh, error term has 0 mean. So, uh, essentially the main difference between a simple linear regression model and multiple regression model is that uh, uh, there is only one explanatory variable in simple linear regression which means that uh, the equation is of this type. So, beta naught plus beta 1 x 1. Uh, plus uh, epsilon and uh, then the multiple regression will have beta 0, beta 1, x 1 plus beta 2, x 2 all the way to beta k, x uh, k plus epsilon. Now, the impact of all the other explanatory variable which was not explicitly considered in the simple linear regression will get lumped into the error term, will get lumped into the error term. So, in general, uh, 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 this error term uh, will incorporate, uh, will, will consider the effect of all these variables which were not considered in the simple linear regression model. So, this was our simple linear regression model, this was our multiple regression model, right. Uh, so, this is, this is going to be the main difference. Uh, so, whatever effect was not explicitly considered will get into the error term. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, so, let us, let us look at the numbers and that, that will tell us a few more things, right. 
there is there are a uh, couple of more things uh, that uh, we are going to specifically focus on one of them is called adjusted r squared if you remember in the simple linear regression output of excel we said the excel prints something like adjusted r squared but we will consider it only when we look at multiple regression so this is the time we should consider that so in general uh, if you add uh, uh, if you add explanatory variables to the regression the r squared is expected to go up r squared is expected to go up however it should go up purely based on the explanatory power of the model it should not go up because we are adding explanatory variables so uh, adjusted r squared adjusts for that uh, number of uh, number of explanatory variables that we have in the model in general it is it is expected to be smaller than the r squared that is reported so adjusted r squared gives us a slightly more realistic picture of what is the combined explanatory power of all these explanatory variables that we have in the model right r adjusted r squared uh, which is generally i have denoted that by r bar squared uh, and r squared is our typical uh, coefficient of determination r bar squared also adjusts for the sample size right uh, there is a specific expression for uh, r bar squared the adjusted r squared but let's not worry about that so uh, just like simple linear regression model we were focused on uh, uh, r squared value and se value which is uh, estimate of sigma epsilon right uh, sigma epsilon is what we want uh, but from the sample we are only going to get se uh, uh, standard deviation of the error terms those two are going to help us understand generally speaking whether our regression model is good or not in general we want a large value of r squared or adjusted r, uh, r bar squared we want the larger value of that and we want a smaller value of uh, se we want a smaller standard deviation of the error terms and we can see uh, from the multiple regression model that uh, r bar squared and se squared move in the opposite direction when we keep adding explanatory variables to the model in general uh, the uh, r uh, adjusted r squared goes up whereas the standard deviation of the error term generally comes down if you add explanatory variables to the model okay uh, so uh, we are uh, uh, the one way to understand uh, this impact of r squared is to look at actually the scatter plot between uh, 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 the observed values of the y variable and the fitted values of the y variable uh the big difference between the explanation uh, the interpretation of r uh in slr against mlr is that uh, uh, actually uh, uh r r value uh, the r value in general if we add explanatory variables uh, to the re multiple regression model uh, the r squared value is expected to go up and the standard deviation of the error term is expected to come down now this r itself the coefficient of correlation uh is a tricky thing in multiple regression model uh, in a simple linear regression model we said r represents the correlation between x and y because there was only one x and obviously one y in multiple regression model there are multiple x's right multiple explanatory variables so r should represent what so in multiple regression model actually r represents the correlation between the observed value of the response variable and the fitted value of the response variable so uh, more uh, tighter this uh, relationship is the higher should be the r value okay so that is the interpretation of uh, uh, r in multiple correlation uh, now uh, the the slope right uh, the slope let us go back to the expression uh, here here the slope uh, of the line which is beta 1 is called the marginal slope what is marginal slope marginal slope is the change in y variable with one unit change in the x variable okay there is no other explanatory variable so this definition is enough look at the same coefficient of x1 in the multiple regression model this coefficient is called partial slope this is called marginal slope this is called partial slope how do we define beta1 in a multiple regression model corresponding to the same explanatory variable how do we define beta1 here we say that beta1 represents the change in y variable with one unit change in x variable keeping all the other x variables constant which means suppressing the effect of all the other explanatory variable 
what is the impact of this explanatory variable on y that is the interpretation of this beta 1 even though the term used is same here also we are calling it as beta 1 x 1 here also we are calling it as beta 1 x 1 this beta 1 is called marginal slope this uh, beta 1 is called partial slope in MLR. Now ideally speaking we want explanatory variables which are orthogonal to each other which are independent of each other. <laughs> if this is truly correct if the explanatory variables that we have in the regression model are truly independent of each other then the marginal slope and the partial slope will have the same value. Rarely however this happens rarely the explanatory variables are completely independent of each other. Okay. Uh, in that case the marginal slope and the partial slope may differ in values. Okay. So that is the interpretation of partial slope and marginal slope. So once again what is partial slope? Slope of the explanatory variable that statistically excludes the effect of other explanatory variables. That is what we said keeping all the other x variables constant what is the change in y with one unit change in this explanatory variable. Right. So, uh, marginal slope however is the slope that comes from the simple linear regression. Right. As we said uh, marginal slope and partial slope will coincide if the explanatory variables are really independent. Rarely however it happens in uh, most of the data sets. Now this uh, path diagram what if what if the explanatory variables are not independent then we can actually uh, that situation is called collinearity you are already aware of it from your previous courses. Collinearity is a situation which represents very high correlation amongst the explanatory variable okay. and sometimes that the collinearity may be so severe that it actually makes the estimates of uh, MLR uh, very difficult to interpret and we will see an example of that also. But what is this path diagram? Path diagram essentially so what are we saying? Uh, in multiple regression model there is an explanatory variable x1 which has an impact on y, there is an explanatory variable x2 which has an impact on y, there may be an explanatory variable x3 which has an impact on y, maybe one more x4 which has an impact on y. Ideally we are saying that these explanatory variables are independent of each other. What if that is not true? So path diagram indicates the relationship amongst the explanatory variable and the response variable. So in addition to these arrows what if x1 may also influence x2 because x1 and x2 are not independent x1 may influence x2. So now we can say that x1 impacts y in two different ways. There is a direct effect of x1 on y which is this arrow. Now there is an indirect effect of x1 on y because x1 impacts x2 and in turn x2 impacts y. So this path is called the indirect effect of x1 on y. If once again let me state it if x1 and x2 were independent if this path if this arrow was statistically not significant then the indirect effect of x1 on y will be 0. Okay. However, if x1 and x2 are correlated x1 may influence y directly, x1 may influence y and x1 may influence x2 and x2 may influence y. Okay, so that may also happen. So what is the total effect of x1 on y? The total effect, total effect of x1 on y is the direct effect, direct effect which is, which is this, right plus the indirect effect okay. and this relationship should hold this relationship should hold I should be able to show that if I add up the direct effect and if I add up the indirect effect I get the total effect of x1 on y right where will I get the total effect of x1 and y uh, x1 on y the total effect of x1 on, on y is represented in the marginal slope right it is represented in the marginal slope because there was no other explanatory variable. So if I say that y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 this is the total effect this is the total effect of x1 on y whereas when I say beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 
Now, there is a direct effect of x1 on y. Now, x1 and x2 may be correlated, x1 and x2 may be correlated and some impact, some amount of this beta 2, some amount of this beta 2 may be because of x1, some amount, not directly, not all b2, not all, not all beta 2, right. So, some amount of this beta 2 may be because of x1. So, this is called the indirect effect. Some component of beta 2 influencing y is the indirect effect. So, this direct, uh, so this total effect should match the direct effect plus the indirect effect, okay. Right now, this will look like a uh, slightly abstract idea, but let us take an example. The best thing is to take an example. So, let us, uh, uh, let us stop the PPT. Let us stop the PPT and actually go to the Excel sheet where I have the example, okay. So, this is the data. 